Earning money through the exploitation of serious events has been an issue since the invention of journalism, but in the YouTube sphere, no one embodies the scumminess of this issue better than Joy Sparkle BS. Joy Sparkle BS is a YouTuber some people on my channel might be familiar with. She rose to fame in early 2017 from criticizing someone who isn't new to my channel, Onision, only to rapidly fall from grace due to her own insanity. In this video, we are going to go over this tale, and this tale is perhaps one of the most insane ones I have witnessed on the internet. Nobody has self-destructed quite as harshly as the subject of this video's deep dive. Today, I bring you the story of Joy Sparkle BS, the ultimate turbo grifter. Hi loves, Joy Sparkle BS. Um, I'm having a panic attack right now, and it's okay. Don't worry, don't freak out, it's fine. Don't you ever, I don't care who the fuck you are, don't ever tell somebody what they can and can't do with their body and with their health. That's bullshit. Yeah, I see you looking at me. Your job is to deal with people that are upset. That's what you are paid for, and that's what you scam people for. She's crazy. Um, she believes that she talks to angels, and that she's psychic, and that she's an indigo child. This is going to be a multiple part series. In this first part, we will go over Joy's beginnings and her original fall from grace. Joy Sparkle BS would rise to fame due to her YouTube commentary videos in 2017. But before this happened, she left quite a footprint on the online world. The earliest postings of her occurred in 2006 on various indigo children focused websites. What is an indigo child? Now, I am not someone who's familiar with this term, but indigo children, from what I understand, are basically part of a new age belief that some people have supernatural powers. In some cases, possessing paranormal abilities, such as telepathy. Indigo children also believe that they are more empathetic and creative than their peers. So Joy believed she had superpowers. These new age beliefs of Joy's, her real name, Katie Marie Smith, would make up most of her early online life. Sometime in 2006, Joy wrote an article entitled, Living Your Own Truth, How to Be an Indigo in an Unsupportive Environment, about how she came out as an indigo. In this article, Joy expresses to the readers that she had an ability called Clear Audience, in which she has a third ear and could talk to ghosts. I'd like to note that Joy was not 18 when this article was written. This article was written in 2006, and she was in her early 20s at this time. She writes in one paragraph, When I was 13, I tried to open up to two classmates about some of my experiences. I explained to them that I had a team of angels I worked with and how I had a past life with one of them. Less than a day later, it was rumored all over school that I was a witch and that I talked to the devil. I had people throw Bibles, crosses, and spit on me as I walked by. I was even called into the principal's office about the rumors. I broke down crying in front of the principal and explained to her that everything is okay and I was spiritually, socially heartbroken. My heart remained in this unprepared state for many years following this incident. In another paragraph, she discussed how she had grown into her ghost talking powers, writing, As I got older, I got better control of my gifts, but the loneliness never left. I felt at times I was living this staggering double life, happy, easygoing, fun, artistically talented Katie by life, and spiritually thirsting master in training by astral and inside my head. I had this overwhelming urge to help others and speak my truth, but it wasn't an easy task to undertake. I knew the repercussions were high. I never wanted to feel the type of social isolating backlash that I had in my past. So what did I do? She continued in the article to talk about how hiding her powers and indigo status made her angry and how she used something called subtle healing to heal people. I don't even know. What is important from reading this is that Joy, up into her mid-twenties, believed she could talk to angels and ghosts and had superpowers. This will become an issue later on in the timeline. The closing of this article gives a brief description of Joy, writing, 
Miss Katie is a 21-year-young indigo living in Paris. Originally from Kansas City, USA, she was guided to Europe by her angels and started working on the indigo movement together with Tahoe, a 29-year-young indigo, founder of Lumina Records. Since the age of 12, she has had a strong angelic connection, and she provides angelic counseling for young indigos who find difficulties in transitioning on this planet. She was heavily into the indigo movement during this time, getting involved in making a movie about the indigo movement. In May 2006, an article to a blog spot was written about this movie, directly stating that Joy was involved in the project, and that the documentary was going to, quote, dive deeper and further than anyone ever has into the indigo movement. The post about the movie read, Our documentary is going to look at the lives of an indigo, the challenges we face on a daily basis, and how we can get out of the matrix and start truly living our unique divine life missions. The movie will be guided by interviews from experts in all the fields of the evolution of humanity and the indigo children themselves. The documentary, according to the post, planned to interview other indigos around the US and Canada, and at the bottom of the post asked for donations. Later on this year, 2006, Katie would enter the YouTuber sphere for her first time, creating the YouTube channel Miss Katie Smith on July 28, 2006, and posted her first video to the channel in September called The Hidden Secret. John is a man, and therefore, John, he can't be a man. Joy would disappear from the public eye after this, at least to our knowledge, until the year 2009. She would reappear with a post on September 4th, 2009, under the username Miss Devic Doll. This is the first instance of Joy speaking of her health that I could find, and her health will become a major focus over the years. In this post, she talks about how she had a major health scare over the summer, and how doctors do not understand illnesses, or what is the best cure for them, amongst the countless typos, Joy talked of how her own intuition for what was ailing her was, and I quote, This summer, I had a health scare come up. Doctors almost did me in. Had I listened to them and not my intuiting, it would have been much worse. But here I am, more confident in myself and my abilities, and stronger than ever. Finally getting over what was ailing me. Two different infections all at once. Hadn't been sick or been to a doctor in eight years. And suddenly, a candida infection, a full body yeast infection and a bacterial abscess on my neck inoperable of course lol to treat both is dangerous and they don't even test for candida in emergency rooms i had to go to a naturopath to really learn what was wrong with me it was a huge battle but i learned a lot the rest of the article which again is almost unreadable due to the typos goes on how modern medicine and society is killing us all through poisons later on in 2017 people claiming to be relatives of joy would greatly contradict this story. But we will get there when we get there. Joy would continue to post about being indigo the rest of this year, writing several things in November about something called indigo hunting. In one post, she writes this. However, I am in business. I con rich white men into giving me money to give to good causes, and they have no clue. Charm is fun when used properly, so I speak fluent white and can tone it down when need be. But get me in a place like this? It's all fun, baby. In another post from November, she wrote in a way that would kind of reflect on how she behaves later on, writing, I wish I were gay. I want to be a gay brown male. The rest of this post I'm quoting is a nonsensical stream of consciousness. There are more posts in this year. In one post from November, Katie, aka Joy, claimed to be 25, and later she claimed to be 22. And in the post claiming to be 22, she writes, But don't worry, there are people from that generation taking responsibility. Aha, uh -huh. was a strange time though. I was on cocaine because I was a stage performer. Back then, I wasn't terrified of drugs like I am now. My manager was toxic and I was paralyzed with stage 
stage fright. She might be talking about past lives here, because also in this post, she writes, You know I died in the hippie movement too, drug overdose, and am terrified of drugs. Again, the post goes off on random tangents with very little sense to be made, much like most of her posts from this time. All of these strange posts from this year were from a website called indigosociety.com networking forums. Joy's online activity would disappear once more, and she would reappear again in 2012. In January 2012, she opened up a Google Plus account, though barely anything remains from there. Later on in the year, in August, Katie wrote an article about indigo children called Ascension Through an Indigo's Eyes on a website called ashtarcommandcrew.net. In this article, Katie Smith, aka Joy Sparkle BS, talks about transcending the third, fourth, and fifth dimensions. She writes that she's experienced the ascension changes, whatever that means, and continues to write, Within this time, my team of angels has told me that I have worked through almost all my major life blocks. She also speaks of her health issues in this article, writing, Last year, when the ascension changes were at their peak point in my life, I found myself with all the classic symptoms, multiplied 10 by 10. I was too physically sick to work a normal job. I was having frequent panic attacks, blurred vision, and nausea so terrible that I was unable to drive. I would have periods of blacking out, restless sleep, and constant insomnia. With chronic fatigue, the worst part was that I went for a period of being totally unable to be creative with my arts. She continued to describe herself as a musical performer and talked about how much this sickness had hurt her career. She writes in the article, Every note I sang was flat, sharp, out of tune, or off key. And no matter how much I tried, using my vocal techniques, I could not sing at all. This continued for four months. My angels reassured me that this was all happening for a divine reason that I could not understand. They explained it was all part of the ascension, and that I was not supposed to be singing then. Don't worry guys, she got her voice back and she got a job at Luminar Records in Paris, France. There was more in this article as well, how her angels had told her to write a book, but she would sit at her computer for hours and no book appeared on the Google Word page. Oh, and get this. Her angels stopped talking to her, which was a problem because Joy wasn't hired at this Paris France company to sing specifically. Her job was to be an angelic channeler. And then she began getting very sick again after her angel stopped talking to her. But this was like the negative energy leaving her body or some <laughs> or her ascending. Cause then her angels came back to talk to her. They told her that she couldn't hear them now because they were activating different parts of her cell structure and DNA that hold many secrets of this universe, of the past, present, and future. Eventually, Joy was able to ascend or some shit. I don't know. And the angels told her all her illnesses were part of her ascension symptoms. These symptoms, according to her angels, were headaches, mild dizziness, pressure in points of the head and neck, neck aches, shoulder stiffness and soreness, swollen hands and feet, blurred vision, Pressure on the third eye, inability to organize, inability to channel, inability to create art, mild memory loss, mild stomach cramping and nausea, mild diarrhea, and fatigue. These symptoms would be unbelievably similar to the aches and illnesses Joy would claim to have later, due to other illnesses she would allegedly have. But the gist of this article is, Joy's sickness was because she was ascending. This is 2012, making Joy around her mid-20s at this time. So it is well into her early adulthood. So, well into her early adulthood, Joy was working as a professional angel talker in France and getting her DNA changed by angels to ascend into the sixth dimension. Joy disappeared once again for another year this time, but then reappeared at the end of 2013, with audio being found of her calling into a spiritual radio show called Paradigm Shift. In this call-in, Katie talked about her tumors and said that she was getting minor heart attacks. I did want to bring something to light um, that I had been really interested in and that I tried recently. Um, I'm really big into homeopathic remedies. Um, in fact, at one point I had a tumor that was inoperable that I was told that can't be cured and I was able to do it through herbs. So I'm, I'm very big on that sort of thing. And oddly enough, the universe likes to throw a lot of odd physical things my way. So long story short, uh, the past few months, 
I'd had some funny symptoms come up, and one was I was having what felt like minor heart attack symptoms. Like there's a like a fist that's constantly squeezing my heart. I have pain going down the left side of my body, um, and some jaw pain, and some several several other things. I had some issues with my stomach, and it kept getting worse. She also said that she healed her sickness with hydrogen peroxide or oxygen therapy or something. And funny enough, a few years ago, I had told her about oxygen therapy. It was something I had looked into. Mm. She later took it and ran with it, and she got something called, um, it's food-grade vegetable hydrogen peroxide. And so she said, okay, and she had tried it, and she had a few different things that it cured. Gave it to, a few, uh, that gave it to some friends. It cured some stuff, too. And really quickly, if people don't know what this is, what oxygen therapy is, is there's a science that says nothing negative can live in your body if it's got oxygen. So, um, so pretty much it just shoots. You know, you take, the, like it's, you take um, different drops of it a day, like three times a day you take X amount of drops, and it oxygenates your body. It will kill viruses. It kills bacteria. It kills infection. It cures cancer. It does a host of things. Joy actually believes all these things. I was so happy because I woke yesterday after I started it an hour later. I didn't have any heart pain whatsoever. And my system is going back into balance. And this is day two of it. And I'm feeling amazing. Like it literally feels like I'm floating. And it's funny because you actually feel lightheaded because you have more oxygen. And so I just wanted to, uh, to briefly come on and say something, hoping that, you know, maybe if somebody is going through something else, um, that it could help them. I've had so many times in my life where I've had a doctor tell me, this is what you have. You'll either have it for the rest of your life or you will die as a result and you can't do anything about it. And I would like to be a person that says BS. You can cure anything. You just have to have the will to go find the resources for it. So I just wanted to share that. I don't want to take up too much time because I know other people want to speak. But hopefully that could help somebody or somebody that maybe somebody knows. Oh, and how she cured her tumor with herbs. And, and yeah, and it's the same with me. I, I've tried herbs before. I love herbs. In fact, herbs cured um, a paraganglioma that I had. It's a tumor on my neck that they tried to operate on, and it, just, it was a mess. It was a nightmare. And um, I had that for eight months, and I had taken herbs. I took, like, a regimen of garlic, olive leaf, um, you know, oregano, several different things. And what I had for about nine months that I couldn't cure, within about two and a half months, went away. just shrinked. Literally, just it just shrunk over a week period. And Katie's last appearance online as Miss Katie Smith would be in March 2014, calling into the radio show Paradigm Shift once again. This call-in was even wackier than the one before, and this would be the last online presence I could find of hers before she returned to be an Onision commentary YouTuber in 2017. In this call, she updates the show hosts on her illnesses. Right, right but it's your show, so I have to be respectful and ask. <laughs> okay, um... So, uh, so going forward, so, um, and I, you know, I don't know how much you remember about this, because, you know, you only speak with a lot of people. You should only remember me. But, um, so, uh, you know, a few months ago when I had called in, um, I was talking about the, uh, the benefits uh, that I started this program. This It was um, hydrogen, oxygen, vegetable peroxide. Yeah, I know, I just, I just like that. The oxygen that. therapy stuff, yeah. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So I wanted to kind of give a bit of an update. Um, so... A couple things happened. So I literally was, I had been sick from the middle of October until literally about a month and a half ago. And I finally beat what I had. One thing she mentioned in this clip also related back to her old article from back in 2012. And this is her talking about how getting sick meant you were getting better. It worked. And I was so happy to say that it worked because, um, as you guys probably know if you've been through stuff, the healing process is really interesting because sometimes you'll start feeling worse and it's actually, you're getting better. Like, it's, like sometimes the point mm -hmm. where you're feeling worse is like something's dying off. And so... Um, she also talked about how the universe was testing her. Um, the reason I'm calling in, sorry, I know this is kind of wordy, but um, I know that a lot of times a lot of people like us, um, we tend to be, we tend to get... I don't like the word tested, but I'll use it because I'm just not smart enough to have another word. But we have the universe throw stuff at us, or we put ourselves even in situations to learn from, and it can get tough. And a lot of us don't have a lot of support. Um, and also just kept talking about how she can heal anything. And believe me, like, I had a tumor one time that I, that I had for a year on my neck that was killing me, but I was told it could not be operated on, I would die. I didn't get rid of it, I die. I've had all these crazy things happen with my physical body. And I have learned um, from these experiences, you literally can heal anything. And the biggest thing mm -hmm. is you have to get to that breaking point and go inside of yourself and say, okay, what's actually going on here? And of course, what I have learned for myself 
it always ends up being emotional. Like, it always ends up being some emotional thing that you are not looking at that ends up manifesting. And that's what it was for me. And you discover all these things. But I just really want to, like, stress to people, do not ever give in to anybody that tells you you can't heal yourself and don't give in to any diagnosis. You can heal anything. You really can. It's all about getting the will to find a cure and getting humble in yourself and saying how they created this or or what situation have I brought myself into or what can I learn from it. This wasn't the craziest part of the phone call. She also goes on to say that she wants to levitate. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, nope, you know, you I love what you just said. And, and speaking on that, like, I have some anger issues I deal with about the fact that I can't levitate. I'm really pissed. <laughs> and, like, ever since I was three, I saw Peter Pan and I knew, like, the jig is up. Like, I need to be floating around. So, right. And the funny thing is, I know that sounds really silly. I mean, I'm not going to you guys, but everybody else and people made fun of me. And I would get seriously angry. And I was like, no, you don't get it. This is so inefficient what we're doing. Now I'm going to be flying. And now I'm seeing there's freaking like they're making these hover cars like VW came out with this thing and they said that it has to have a grid and I'm laughing like of course it has to have a grid of course because it's all a freaking grid and I was so excited and how she has radiation sickness something else that I think some people are going through and I'll just touch on this very quickly um, I know a lot of people have gone through this that I know uh, in being sick as well I started having what felt like symptoms of radiation and I was going what the hell why do I feel like I'm in a micro Wave. And I mean, literally, there was a few days where I was just in bed going, what's going on? And the intuitive message I got that several of my friends got, even when we weren't talking, was I think a lot of us are taking on a lot of, I don't even know how to put it, but it's like in an energetic way. We're taking on radiation in ourselves, and we are like, uh, you know, we're transmuting it. In a sense, we're almost, in a, in a, and it's good because like the planet has just been, as you guys know, it's been so inundated. I think a lot of us right now are literally helping to transmute that stuff on a level that we are completely aware of. And in the process, I think the radiation is activating stuff. So in a sense, it's kind of making us mutants. So I feel like I'm talking too much about it, but um, I just wanted to kind of throw that out there because I know, again, we just, we're sensitive and we all go through crap that nobody else understands. Doctors can't diagnose. I just wanted to to throw that out there because that was something else I'd experienced too. Yeah, this was Katie in her late 20s to early 30s. This is not a young girl with strange fantasies. This is a grown adult who thinks she can heal an inoperable tumor with garlic. Katie would disappear once again and then reappear in late 2016. Katie would come back in late 2016 as Joy Sparkle BS, and this is where she caught her notoriety. Joy would get noticed quickly on the gossip image board lolcow.farm, on the threads for discussing popular internet trash fire, Onision. I myself was a fan back in the day, when she first started, and would cite Joy Sparkle BS as my, sort of, introduction into online commentary. She was known to make emotional videos relating her own life experience to the way Onision treated the people in his life. I want to note before going further that Joy has deleted her original channel and her videos were not properly archived. What remains are her second channels and mirrors of both her original channel and her streams to the popular streaming site, You Now. I have pieced this insanity as best as possible from what is left over, as well as from posts on the online image board, lolcow.farm, and the gossip forum, Kiwi Farms. Before becoming somewhat of a lolcow herself, Joy would make videos throughout late 2016 and early 2017 and tweet about creating videos for her subs. But the first sign of her own insanity came on January 29th, 2017, with a video titled, I Don't Want to Die, Health Updates and Fears. The video was met with positivity, and although it has gone to time, I do believe in this video, Joy cries about having health issues and acts very brave in the face of problems. The description of the video read, I've had a lot of people come forward and ask to donate slash send me money. While I truly, appreciate the kindness and offer to tears. I cannot and will not accept anyone's money right now. I will make a video about this soon, but I'll try to go into some details here. Also in the comments, Joy wrote in response to one person that she is sick from getting a form of birth control called an IUD. 
This sickness caused her to almost die six months ago, according to her. And she says that she had been hiding her illness for four years and told no one. Despite her around three years ago going on a talk show and talking about being cured. Anyways, according to Joy, the IUD rusted inside of her and gave her copper toxicity. This is something that has been unheard of ever before, as IUDs have a coating, and if this did happen to Joy, she needed to be studied. Not only did she suffer, allegedly, from copper toxicity, she also had something called fibromyalgia. I am not going to say Joy does or does not have any illnesses, but throughout her time online describing her illnesses, there were people who suffered from fibromyalgia themselves, who would criticize Joy for claiming that she had it. Also around this time, Joy Sparkle BS reached 9,000 subscribers and tweeted about this milestone, thanking everyone for it. She had only been making videos for a few months, but she must have really resonated with people. Soon though, due to her behavior online and the interest of Lolcow from the Onision threads, Joy received her own Lolcow thread. On February 7th, 2017, the opening of the thread read, Joy Sparkle is a YouTube personality who randomly appeared to insert herself into Onision drama and got 10,000 subs within a short time. Recently made several 90 to 120 minute videos rambling about drama, aside from frantically trying to get exclusive interviews with everyone marginally involved with Onion. She goes off on insane tangents about past lives and her fatal health issues. She's bizarrely enthusiastic about drama and has started to make videos about other cows apparently in an attempt to make herself relevant. During a recent live stream, she claimed her videos aren't monetized, but said that she messed around on her profile and monetized everything on accident, undid it, and might have missed something. The same day as this, Joy would begin doing extremely long You Now streams. On this day, she went on a two-hour stream to talk about the recent Onision drama. One point of criticism to Joy over the course of this year is that, for someone claiming to be so sick, she would post up to six videos a day and stream two to five hours a day on top of that. Around this time, Onision became a huge point of criticism to the YouTube community, especially because he had recently brought on a third girl into his marriage, and when that didn't work out, he wanted to chain the third girl up in his basement. Not only that, he was called out the previous year for raiding underage girls' bodies on his channel. Joy's videos were often criticisms of Onision's poor treatment of women, and we were all here for it. But she also began to get criticism, albeit from a very small amount of people, that she was making money off of talking about these serious issues. I for one don't care if someone makes a few bucks from talking online about serious topics, but Joy has this continuing issue where she would try to please everyone and started putting out her analytics to prove she wasn't profiting off her obsessive reporting. At the beginning, she did monetize some of her videos and felt the need to explain why she did to the audience. There's one thing I've noticed while talking about crazies on the internet. It's that they overshare. There is a fine line between being transparent and oversharing. And Joy early on quickly began to cross this line. Because not only did she overshare about her own decisions, she began uploading many videos about Onision. Again, I'd like to point out that the magnitude of her uploads no longer exists in the public space of the internet. But judging from screen caps and other people's videos, it started around this time to become a lot. But to be fair, a lot of videos at first wasn't bad. I was a fan of Joy at the time, and I would plug in my headphones and listen to her rantings while I worked at my desk. It was great for casual listeners. But Joy's brand of, uh, crazy soon reared its head, and sometime around the lolcow thread creation, Joy made a video discussing her past lives. We know of this video thanks to posts referencing it around the 8th of February. And if you want something else besides gossip, on lolcow.farm. I myself remember watching this video at the time. According to this video, Joy was making videos because of flashbacks from her past lives. And in these past lives, she was an important figurehead. In her past life, when she was a powerful person, she said that she was in the medieval era and caused mass murder and stuff. And her growing popularity on YouTube scared her because of this. Like apparently, she said that in her past life, she got off to cutting off people's heads. She claimed to think that the health problems she was suffering from at this time were due to karma for what she did in her past lives. 
Choi also quickly noticed her lockout thread, and according to posts on the website, she began directly responding to the thread. Choi also began to contradict herself. Around the 11th of February, she spoke in live streams about how much she valued her privacy, but gave her location in other live streams. This is something Joy would do even to this day. I remember she gave her full name in a live stream, but then threw a hissy fit when YouTuber Twink Cowboy Revzilla said her name in a video. Also on this day, February 11th, Joy made claims, allegedly, that she wanted to delete her YouTube channel and move to you now. She did not do this at this time. She also said she was done with Onision drama, which was definitely not the case. Joy never sticks with what she says she'll do. You'll notice that as we go further. The next day, Joy would do something that a lot of lockouts tend to do. She decided to directly respond to her criticism, but instead of doing it maturely, she referred to her critics as haters. She went on a You Now stream to respond directly to Lockout. This, again, is a huge no-no, and this caused her fans to flood the Lockout thread and post stupid stuff and just crap up the thread. The stream is no longer available, but it sounded, uh, I have no better word for it than cringe. It seemed her uploads started to increase. On February 13th, 2017, it was noted that she uploaded three Onision videos at this point in the week. She was streaming on You Now and acting a mess on this day as well. A day after this, she uploaded more videos on her health. Not only this, she started up a narrative that would be prevalent in her videos. This narrative is that her fibromyalgia was giving her memory issues. In this video, she said that people needed to be patient with her if she gets people's pronouns wrong because she made these pronoun mistakes due to her memory issues. This excuse would be used for any time Joy made a mistake, rather than just apologizing and correcting said mistake. I'm having brain fog, hold on. See, these are the parts you don't see that I edit out. And what I was experiencing there was just brain fog. And the problem is when my illness flares up, um, it's coming back, when my illness flares up, it's like I can't hold on to anything in my brain. I can't get the synapses to work and everything to, to form correctly in sentences. It's like just, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> Maybe I'll go back to it. Um, Her excuse was she messed up because she was sick. She decided on this day, February 14th, to throw her hat into a sphere of YouTube called the Skeptic Sphere. The skeptics were very popular around this time and would respond to people who were known as social justice warriors with facts and logic. A popular target at this time was a trans YouTuber named Riley Dennis, and apparently Joy made a video responding to Riley about being trans and got their pronouns wrong. These harsh videos to social justice warriors were popular at the time, from people like Andy Worski, The Amazing Atheist, and Blair White, and were very insensitive towards people. Despite these videos being popular and well-received at the time, Joy's videos were met with a lot of dislikes, probably because Joy's original videos were about her own issues and calling out Onision for hurting women. And telling a trans YouTuber they are crazy really didn't seem to line up with her content, and she began to lose subscribers around this time. Joy was called out for this video and how she treated Riley Dennis, and began to say it was an experiment to see if people would react to what she said. Mate, oi, oi, it's a prank. Fuck it's a prank, mate. Oh, right, look. Look, there's a camera there. On the 15th of February, she started mentioning Lockout outside of her streams and began to reference the website on her channel videos. A new Joyism appeared. Her hatred of people named Kathy. On February 13th, she tweeted that she was making a Kathy video. She would eventually upload that video and Kathy is the name of her mom. Just keep that in mind. I think I personally recall the Kathy videos and Kathy in these videos was kind of like calling someone a Karen nowadays, but I'm not 100% sure. I just remember Joy really hated her mom. I mean, people named Kathy. Joy would get increasingly angry at her viewers, and on the 16th of February, she would reply to criticism harshly on her channel and tweet about how people had bad opinions. I want to remind the audience, Joy was posting up to three videos a day and was now at over 10,000 subscribers. And to expect every person to be positive of her content, especially considering her content was extremely critical of other YouTubers, is a pretty silly expectation. The day after this, on the 17th, Joy would stream about Lolcow again, though this stream is again not archived. 
She also on this day made a video comparing herself to Alex Jones. Yeah. Joy continued to lose subscribers after this. Later on in the timeline, Joy blamed others for a conspiracy to ruin her reputation online. But even from the beginning, she was doing a good job of this on her own. Joy's videos on Onision really started to ramp up as well. And on the 21st of February, an anonymous poster counted her recent videos on Onision, and these videos added up to over 20 videos. I myself have made a decent amount of Onision content, but in my four years on YouTube, it is still under 10 videos. Repsion, the most notable Onision critic, hasn't even hit that number in his many years of criticizing Onision. And yet, Joy has hit that number in days. February ends with Joy doing more streams in an attempt to fight with Lolcow. Joy started out the month of March by making a video claiming she was ghetto and also making a video on Trisha Paytas. Apparently, in one of these videos, she said she used to overshare but no longer does. To which a LolCow user writes, Used to? Mentions diarrhea multiple times per video. Also according to the user's post, Joy had a new medical issue added to her fibromyalgia and copper toxicity, Raynaud's disease. The day after these, Joy went on stream with someone who will be important later on, Phil, who who she will call Phildo the Wizard. Phil was a friend of Joy's who, like Joy, believed he had magical powers. He would betray Joy later in the timeline, and Joy would reference the fact that he thought he was a wizard to discredit him, despite her thinking angels changed her DNA to ascend to the sixth dimension. After this, Onision began to want to debate his haters and put out a challenge. Whoever used his hashtag in the video about the debate and got the most views would be able to debate him live. Joy technically won as she put the correct hashtag in her video, but Onision ended up debating the YouTuber Jacqueline Glenn because she got more views, but she did not use the correct hashtags. It was a shit show. Joy was supposed to come on after, but had technical difficulties. So, <laughs> finally, finally working. Great. Awesome. Okay, first off, can you explain your relationship with Joy Sparkles? I don't, I don't watch either of you guys' videos on me as a I don't, so I don't, I don't know. Have I don't have a relationship with her. Actually, I only found out about her because of the video that you made mentioning the three of us. That was the first that I uh, that I had heard of her channel. So, yeah. Um, do you know if Joy Sparkles is waiting? Cause I gotta, I actually gotta go soon. So I want to see if Joy Sparkles is up. I can see. Am I getting a call? Is that everything? Oh, what about privacy? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so my wife is saying that you talked about her vagina publicly and you um, attacked her and her non-binary status. What video did I talk about a vagina? There. You, you, you actually... Oh, the, the two genders video. You, you literally mentioned my wife's vagina in a video and you made fun of their non-binary status. But you can't do something that's clearly hurting someone on one page and say that you care about them on the other. That's all um, I want to say about this. This is kind of going in circles now, and I you, think you would like to move on because you know I'm about to make a very key point. Oh, that's definitely not what the reason is. But go ahead. Yeah, that was pretty simple. Um, okay, I'm gonna find Joy Sparkles in silence, talking to myself now. Hope you have a wonderful day. Right, bye. After the failure of the debate between Joy and Onision, Onision started directly responding to Joy. At this time, Joy had a ridiculous amount of videos on the man, responding to the smallest new detail about him. Onision would begin to call Joy Sparkle a stalker, due to the amount that she commented on every little thing he did. Now, Onision is a scumbag. If you don't know much about him, please reference my series on him as well as the Right Opinion series to understand what he has done on the internet. So, Onision retaliating against Joy? People were mostly on her side. She was just a woman with a small fan base versus a psycho with millions of subscribers who hurt young women. Go Joy, right? Wrong! Because not only was Joy commenting on Onision, she was releasing small details about herself that led people to really question the validity of anything she said. Like the copper toxicity, the fact that she was too sick to work, that she mislabeled fibromyalgia as an autoimmune disease, and that she was living with a dude she called roommate who let her live with them for free. But Joy would distract everyone by going after Onision more. He DM'd her and she began to go on streams reading out his messages for all to laugh at. But people were beginning to actually side with Onision, which is 
quite a feat. You have to be a very unlikable person for people to side with Onision over you. After all this, on the 13th of March, she uploaded a video saying she will no longer make videos on Onision because Onision sent her a cease and desist. This is where Joy really skyrocketed. Can you just like stop with the annoying voice? It's painful, Joy. It's painful. Just let me read the f***ing letter. I'm skipping to the end. It's on your time, bitch. Was that supposed to be funny? Many people called this a fake cease and desist letter because it was pretty apparent Onision wrote it himself. But the thing is, from my understanding, you can write and send your own cease and desist letter. But Onision was so unlikable, so everyone, including me, was on Joy's side. This is where Joy began to get featured on bigger channels. Repsion and YouTuber Andy Worski made videos on the situation helping Joy get tons of new subs. But with that, Joy was getting more criticism. On the 14th of March, small YouTuber and ex Onision forum moderator Rag Reynolds made a video about Joy, saying she was nice enough but made a ridiculous amount of videos on Onision. Here are 20, the 20 most popular videos Joy has made in the last two months. Uh, and um, let's count how many involve Onision, shall we? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 14, 15, 16, 17 of the 20 videos involve Onision's name in the title. Now, she might actually mention Onision in those other three videos that I didn't count. She might mention him, I don't know. But those 17 videos here, 17 of 20, mention his name. That is insane, Joy. What are you thinking? Also, Rag criticized Joy for her strange way of giving information in videos and how Joy would get mad over small things. Now, in this video, I'm not going to play this one because I don't even know what to play. She makes almost no point. It's like, what happened in these Onision debates? Now, you could quite easily go watch my 10 minute video and I got across more information in those 10 minutes along with showing clips of myself, then Joy managed to get across in 29 minutes. I couldn't watch this entire video. I'm watching it. I wanted to know what she was saying. And to, to start with, it takes her like a minute to even speak about what she wants to speak about. I've noticed this is a common thing throughout her videos. She starts speaking and, okay, what does this have to do with the video title? The self-proclaimed ill Joy started upping the amount of streams and videos she was doing. And on March 16th, someone on LolCow noted that for the past few days, she was doing at least two live streams a day. And a meme emerged around this time as well. Joy's followers began referring to her as Joyzus. The angel talking YouTuber now had a devoted cult of followers. And I myself was included in her fan base at this time. Joy soon jumped into talking on other subjects that Andy Worski and Repsion both focused on skeptic stuff, and began making videos on Faith Kids, which was some religious kids channel. I can't quite remember exactly what it was, but it was a popular thing to criticize on the platform. But soon, something weird happened. Around March 19th, Joy made a video on a tragedy that made the news. But the strange thing about this, it was a tragedy that happened to her own family. It was about two young children killed in a car accident, two young children in her family. She said she made this video to bring awareness about driving intoxicated and wearing seatbelts, as the people driving were reported to be wasted. Joy isn't necessarily wrong here. Don't drive drunk. But her family took to Facebook to call her out for using the situation for attention. I myself did not see this video and can only judge from secondhand accounts of it. LolCal users did not seem too judgmental for this and actually felt bad for the situation. But the use of tragedy for attention, that's going to be a theme for Joy. I want to say talking about tragedy for teaching lessons isn't 
wasn't bad, per se. But I believe the issue when it comes to Joy, as time went on, is the amount of times she engaged in this behavior. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Joy's illness claims started to get really out of control as well. On the 21st of March, a LolCal user talked about how they were tracking her illnesses and her claims between her live streams and her YouTube videos, and how this began to paint a strange picture. And considering this, and prior to what she did to her YouTube fame, like how she thought angels were making her sick, it just, yeah, I can't even put it into words. People began calling themselves Joy Illness Trackers on the forums because it really began to get out of control. Was Joy sick? I'm not here to make any claims, but on streams, she would be extremely energetic for up to six hours at a time, multiple times in the day, while suffering from illnesses that made it so she couldn't get out of bed. This is where people began digging into her past. At this point, who she was was unknown, but someone on LolCow found her real name and her history as a singer and her LinkedIn profile. Her old pictures looked very different than the Joy on camera. Joy wasn't gross, but she was a bit disheveled, to say the least. Her old photos showed a pretty young woman. Joy was doxxed, and this really opened up the floodgates. At this time, most people were believing her illness claims, though some were skeptical. But her history? Well, it would really make people question her. She got doxxed around March 24th, and the day after, she went on stream and was apparently acting really erratic. She claimed it was due to a lack of sleep, though farmers thought she was drunk or high. Joy's vulgar side also came out at this time. Joy has a very immature sense of humor, which I'm not trying to criticize her for this per se. Just pointing out, she likes to talk about poop and queefs a lot. Along with this strange stream, sometime around this day, the 25th of March, Joy allegedly uploaded multiple videos to gain sympathy about being sick. One was allegedly called Still Dying, and this is when her indigo child history was found on this same day. The stuff I discussed at the beginning of this video were found on this day. Apparently, according to posts, Joy had commented on her new age past in videos, which are now gone to time, saying she distanced herself from these beliefs. But to be fair, I myself find it very hard to believe after over half a decade of believing angels gave you superpowers, one could just flip a switch back to sanity. A day after this, on the 26th, Joy posted another video about her sickness, allegedly, called, My Brain is Sick. An anonymous LolCal user summed up her claims in this video on a post on this day, writing, Okay, I watched the My Brain is Sick video, where she says she got the Paragard IUD six years ago and started to get sick 4.5 years ago in April 2013, actually just under four years, with collapses and heart issues, then fevers, weakness and pain to near strokes, near heart attacks, and oncoming seizures. <sighs> Sorry, I have just, I get exhausted and I start having chest pain, so I have to, to catch my breath. <sighs> okay, um, let me come back. Come, come on, brain fog. Um, so copper tea, this is gonna get really interesting. Maybe, maybe this is a bad idea. Um, but it's a copper shaped tea they insert and the copper acts as like a spermicide and um, prevents pregnancy. For six years, for the most part, it pretty much did its job. But um, the problem is, is that the copper, because it's in a moist environment, um, started to rust. And that, as a result, led to where I'm at now with being extremely ill. So <clears throat> this was about what, six years ago I got this. Um, about four and a half years ago, I started getting really, really sick. It was around April 2013. Um, I started having collapses and heart issues, and, it, and I, I didn't know what was going on. I went to the, the ERs, I went to doctors, nobody could figure it out. Um, this progressively got worse. And it turned into uh, fevers, constant fevers. I would have fevers for a week and that just wouldn't go away. Um, there were a lot of symptoms. I was, a lot of it's just extreme weakness and extreme pain. I was doing that while fighting near strokes, near heart attacks. She says because the copper is in a moist environment, it rusts, and this is why it released copper into her body. Copper cannot rust. Rust is iron oxide, which only results from the oxidation of iron. Copper can also oxidize, but it forms a green patina over the surface, like on the Statue of Liberty. However, that patina is a waterproof protective layer over the interior metal. It doesn't leach out copper the way she's claiming. This is where she names the naturopath doctor that saved her life as Amanda Cheney in Kansas City, Missouri. You can see her education here. She says she argued with her real doctors her illness couldn't possibly be anxiety disorder because she was having fevers. 
I would go to doctors, I'd go to the hospitals. They would say, well, we see an irregular EKG, we see the fever, but we don't know what it is. It's anxiety, take a Xanax. I would get so irate because some of them were just horribly rude. Um, or if they saw me come back, they'd be like, so you're back here for your anxiety. And I remember like, I've had yelling matches with doctors. Um, doctors, I've met some of the most wonderful people I know are doctors. Uh, my name is, or my uh, doctor, her name is Amanda Cheney. Um, and uh, if, you ever, if you guys ever have a mystery illness and need help, Amanda Cheney in Kansas City saved my life. In a live stream, she denied it was anxiety because she had a low resting heart rate. And she already knew what anxiety and panic attacks felt like. So this was different. Never mind that panic attacks can make you feel like you're having a heart attack and are literally dying at the time. She goes on to say she is able to fight the precursors of a seizure with meditation. No. That sounds like anxiety. Real seizures cannot be stopped just by calming down. Only anticonvulsant medication can do that. She then claims she got a diagnosis of fibromyalgia, doesn't say if the naturopath diagnosed her or a real doctor, and was told it's incurable, but she claims she can heal it by reprogramming her body with meditation and prayer and faith slash non-religious affirmation, which she says is like putting it out there, you are asking for help. My doctors, when I finally got the diagnosis of fibromyalgia, I was told it's not curable, and I said, f you. First of all, don't you ever, I don't care who the f you are, don't ever tell somebody what they can and can't do with their body and with their health. That's bullshit. I'm of the mindset I can heal anything. I just have to meditate, pray, I have to program my body the right way with meditation, and I have to stay in a state, and this is not religious that I'm talking about, but what I call prayer and faith. A physical illness you can cure with meditation likely has a mental cause, like anxiety. She says it's been the worst over the last eight months and almost died several times in the last few months. If you were to ask my opinion on this situation, I would say Joy was trying to distract her audience from the criticism. Much like how earlier on she sent people to crap up the lockout thread and derail it, she was doing something similar, but this time with claims of illness for sympathy. But again, I'm not here to say she's not sick. This is just my thoughts on the situation. She also, on this day, made another video about Onision. The video is called Onision Re Dear Girlfriend, where she relates her criticism of Onision back onto her illness and how her ex-boyfriend was like Onision, in that he was also bad and he didn't believe she was actually sick. Everything else began to be found on this day. Her radio call-ins, her Indigo movie fundraising, everything. Joy went on stream to say she was embarrassed by all of this, allegedly. Something strange happened on this day on the LolCow image board amongst all of this. Someone came in and started to really cause drama over a girl called Angel. Angel was a disabled girl who Joy would have on her streams. Apparently, I wasn't around for this, and the streams have not been archived. The thing is though, nobody cared about this girl, and it seemed like another diversion tactic from Joy and her followers. And later on, it turned out to be something like that. I'll get to that later. The 26th of March was a mess. There were Joy fans, or Joy Tards as some people would call it, posting to the thread. There were articles being uncovered, and Joy was spamming videos and streams to distract the audience. Or, at least it seems like this is what was happening, looking back on this. A lot of YouTubers like to lurk on LolCow and not reference it much, but a lot of the image board is really part of this story, and how the board itself antagonized Joy, and how she tried to antagonize the board back. After all this, the next day, Joy got her second LolCow thread, less than two months after her first one. On LolCow, when a thread reaches a certain post count, a new thread is made, and Joy's antics filled up the first thread quicker than usual for people being discussed in the flakes and mistakes section of the site. The opening of this thread revealed that Joy now had over 20,000 subscribers and had made over 50 videos on Onision at this time. That is quite the feat. Joy kept live streaming this month. Here is a summary of one of her streams from March 29th. The summary basically describes Joy Sparkle going on multiple streams and just making a fool of herself and sucking up to people more popular than her for attention. After this, DMs began to circulate, most likely fake DMs, of Joy admitting to faking to be her friend, Angel, on LolCow to distract everyone on the image board. I do believe Joy was sending people to the image board to divert discussion, but I also think people were faking DMs to fake drama. It was a mess, and I have not seen anything like this before. 
before. Most of the time, cows either ignore the gossip sites or they directly respond to them on streams and on social media. I have not seen a cow send people to the site to fake drama and stir shit up. Joy kept on her Onision criticism and constant videos and streaming for the rest of the month of March. It was a pretty strange time if you followed it closely. Like Joy went on stream to sing about queefing at the end of the month, but we move on to April. Joy had not only latched onto Worski and Repsion, but she also made alliances with Suit Yourself, a smaller YouTuber in the skeptic sphere, and Takedown Man. Takedown Man was a man who LARPed as an FBI informant or something like that. He has his own sordid history. So we are in April. Joy hasn't fallen from grace yet, and she keeps accumulating new fans. But she started acting even weirder. Apparently on the 1st of April, she went on You Now to make a jokes, and also around this time, may have claimed to have cancer. All I can say is she kept having more health claims. A crazy rival to Joy appeared on the 2nd of April, Jamie Leigh Fisher. Jamie is even crazier than Joy, and she began to make it her goal to discredit the anti-Onision YouTuber. It didn't work. Jamie got her own lolcow thread, and her own Kiwi Farms thread, and is now gone from YouTube, from what I can tell. Apparently, Jamie used the fake DMs from lolcow to try to discredit Joy, and that was kind of a win for Joy, because Joy and her followers planted those fake DMs to f with Joy's enemies. I think. It's 4D chess or some sh For f sake, just make videos, Joy. Joy would go on stream to mock the crazy Jamie Lee Fisher for falling for her super cool tricks. After Jamie came in, Joy went on stream again on the 3rd of April, and it was weird according to lolcow users. Joy at this point mostly acted somewhat composed on YouTube, but it seemed like, at least according to the gossip message boards, the real craziness, or milk as they would call it over on the image boards, happened when she was on You Now. Also on the 3rd, Joy started another beef, beefing with Onision, the lolcow message boards, and Jamie Lee Fisher, and even her own family wasn't enough for her, and she started to fight with a 17-year-old YouTuber named Constigo. Constigo was an Onision fan at the time, who was very agreeable to talk to, and Constigo did an interview with Joy. Joy blew off Constigo and didn't post the interview, so Constigo just posted the interview herself because she had her own copy. This shouldn't be a problem. Constigo wanted the interview out, and Joy had been blowing her off for a while and postponing the post date. Well, Joy no like the 17-year-old posting her own version of the interview, and Joy threw a tantrum on video and on Twitter. Here are her tweets on the situation. LOL, good riddance. If you talk shit, don't expect to get help from the person you talked crap about. Sorry, life lessons learned. Delete. If you are a small channel and you want to do a collab and you turn around and talk shit on me, I am in no way obligated to put up said collab. Stealing videos is not cute. Be lucky I'm letting it go. Don't talk shit and be rude to the person helping you. Don't talk shit and be rude to the person helping you. Lesson learned, good luck. Every week, I work to promote a channel that I can help because I enjoy helping, but I will not allow myself to get taken advantage of. Bye. LOL, everything is okay, guys. Children being children. You gotta let people be. They will eventually learn their lessons. Let children tantrum. Don't you love it when people steal your work, then turn around and call you a con artist and talk about morality? LOL, tantrums and triggers. A conversation with Constigo was also posted to the farms on her perspective on why she released the video. She released it because Joy lied about putting up the video. She also lied about debating with Onision. She also lied about her identity. She lied about her illnesses and lied about giving money to charity. Joy continued to melt down on Twitter into the next day, writing, let's rumble motherfucker. Apparently Constigo's betrayal had set her off. Betrayal! What? Betrayal! And she tweeted that eyes were watching her everywhere as well. And according to posts, I can gather Joy went on stream to continue her meltdown. She also kept posting to Twitter. Here's some more Joy tweets about this situation. Angry. This is a warning. Link to live stream on you now. Little b remove the allegation. I've got the screenshots, as do others. Either we go the law or you publicly apologize for that. You will publicly apologize or I'm coming after you with everything the law has. You prepared to lose it all for lies? Is that you blocked me? You got something to say, assholes? Say it. Don't be a bitch about it. But you better apologize for what you said or I'm coming after you with the law. You will make an apology or a retraction or you will be getting a subpoena from my lawyer. How you want to play this? Let's rumble, mother Want to know why they removed the allegation and blocked me? Because they know they are in trouble and lied. Now retract or lawyers will deal with it. You think just because you blocked me, I can't see you? I got eyes everywhere. We don't need to drag this to the court, but I'm so happy to do it. Real simple. Apologize and admit you lied and we will drop this shit. 
Make a public apology, otherwise this will get real fun. Should I release the screenshot now? Countdown to apology time. I've let people say all kinds of shit and do dangerous things. I let it go. I've said very little, but this? I'll sue you for everything you got. You better get scared. You are dealing with a real bitch who knows her shit. You will not take my kindness for weakness. When I do stand, watch out. Because I know my sh and I know the f***ing law. And I have no problem taking you for everything and giving it to people who are in need. That's right, these pussies made it private. That's because I'm in the right in this. You better make a public apology. I'm not playing around. Biggest admission of guilt is to delete the tweets. Make private and private that page like the pussies you are. Waiting for the apology. <sighs> so... Joy is flipping out on Twitter, calling a 17-year-old a bitch and threatening to sue her for posting her own recording of an interview on YouTube. Well, that's actually what it seems like it is. But Joy actually had started a different Twitter fight, separate from Constigo. After people showed confusion, Joy then clarified what set her off was a now-deleted tweet reading, Hashtag Joy Sparkle BS Secret Marriage Betrayed Husband Disowned by Family Psychosis Indigo Children Links to lies and deception. So she was tweeting all those tweets about this random on Twitter making crazy allegations while also tweeting that she's going to be maybe suing a 17 year old. It's confusing. Joy then claimed that this was not about Constigo, despite there also being tweets about the 17 year old intertwined with the tweets about suing the person making bizarre accusations. She only got weirder from here. Like on the 5th of April she made a whole video because of a 12 year old leaving a negative comment. After this blow up, Joy claimed to be taking a break from social media, which lasted less than a day because she came back on the 6th to say she felt better on Twitter and then starts to fight with her old friend Angel. Angel then dropped all her DMs with Joy. These DMs showed into the mind of Joy. And after this, on the next day, Joy did a live stream where she got some random girl to tell people's future with tarot cards. What a prosperous social media break. It's very confusing. And the only way to summarize this whole Joy, Angel, Constico drama is that Joy is messy. Joy causes constant drama wherever she goes because she needs to be the center of attention and when people start criticizing her, she waves her illness in the air to excuse her actions. Joy continued to lie on camera as well, saying she was stepping back from social media. Still, but she continued to make two videos a day. She also started making claims that she was donating her money to charity and this charity thing is kind of messy. She did probably donate something, but the constant barrage of information from Joy makes following her antics confusing and hard to verify any one of her claims. On the 9th of April, she claimed to have sent over $2,000 to charity, but according to LawCow, her receipts showing her donations only showed that she sent $50. I'm not saying she didn't donate what she claimed to have donated, I'm just saying that from what I saw, I didn't see it. Joy just kept throwing videos at YouTube. Noted on the 11th of April, she dropped six videos in less than a 24-hour span. Also, the day after that, she copyright claimed the video Constigo put up and got it removed. People around this time began to call her Oni Shion. Get it? She's the female version of Onision. And also during this time, an event known as Adpocalypse began to happen. YouTube began to demonetize YouTubers at a rapid pace. During this time, many YouTubers saw their earnings slashed. Joy included, who would post about how upset she was about not earning as much money. This is the cause of why she started to post so many videos. She thought, most likely, if her videos were now earning less, she needed to put out more. And this is when her posting patterns got really nuts. Again, around this time, she was posting six videos within a 24-hour span. More of Joy's past became uncovered as well on the 12th of April. A profile of hers surfaced from a music performance website called Prodigy Inc. There it was revealed that Joy, after getting paid to talk to angels in Europe, came back to America to give people vocal lessons. Joy's manic postings continued. I took note of a post on the 14th of April detailing that Joy had posted four videos in a 24-hour period on United Airlines. She was displaying really obsessive manic behavior. Her behavior should have been written off by the majority of people, but her audience was growing and she was attaining a form of power in the commentary world on YouTube. On the same day as this, Joy opened up a second channel called Spurpinklebow. The output between these two channels would become insane and difficult to follow in the next coming months. There were more streams after this on you now, though they are gone to time. And Joy brought us joyous news on the 18th of April that she felt great because she was on new meds and that she was going to start filming on this day two killer videos.
something serious happens around this time, around the 18th of April, in the YouTube sphere. A YouTuber by the name of Daddy05 became a huge subject of controversy. Daddy05 was a YouTuber who did prank vlogs with his family of a wife and five kids. He and his family became the subject of controversy because the contents of these vlogs were horrifying. Many of the pranks had the father, Mike, harassing two of his kids, Cody and Emma, who were from his previous marriage, to the point where it was obvious severe abuse was being monetized on YouTube. The community rallied to expose this, and Joy found her next meal ticket. The first mention I can find from Joy talking about this case was on the 19th of April, where she tweeted that she was going to post six new videos on the subject. But along with these six Daddy of Five videos, Joy was posting responses to Onision, who she claimed was trying to sue her and Keemstar. Same day, April 19th. Also on this day, Joy reached out to a woman named Rose Hall. Rose Hall was a biological mother of the children, Emma and Cody, from Daddy of Five, and had recently been interviewed by the small YouTuber, Chambers of the Heart. We know of Joy reaching out on this date due to a Google Drive Joy would post the next year with a collection of all her communications during the Daddy of Five drama. In in order to expose Rose Hall, but she was on Rose's side during this time. Rose wanted to get custody back of Emma and Cody, saying that the reason she lost custody to begin with was due to the judge having a bias against women with bipolar disorder. Considering how much abuse the father, Mike Martin, had exposed these two children to, everyone was on Rose's side. Rose seemed like a shy, sweet woman whose only flaw was having some mental issues, which of course didn't mean she was a terrible mother. Joy emailed Rose, offering to help get the word out on Rose trying to get her children back, to which Rose told her to call her. But the first major blow to Joy's credibility came the next day, when Fildo the Wizard decided to put a three-hour exposed video on Joy. He went through every conversation the two had over the many years of their friendship. Now, it was a very long video, but the main point everyone who was critical of Joy took away from this was that Joy fabricated a resume for Phil, and when Phil questioned the fabricated resume, Joy told them it was normal to lie to employers. Sometime tonight I need you to go over your resume. Did you look at it? What do you think? And I said, you seem to have passed out. Yeah, I looked at it. I still have it up even. And this is where it gets kind of freaky. But I said, okay, what do you think so far? I made it very easy for you to explain to employers. Once we go over it, it'll be a breeze. Whatever you do, make sure to explain you were either a manager or assistant manager of your departments at Publix, etc. And the other place. Keep in mind, she is telling me to lie to people here. She has no problem with lying, and she is telling me to boldface lie. And I said, no offense, but there is little in here that is actually me. And some of the stuff here could be easily checked. Again, I want you to note this. This is 2012, and we're talking about pathological lying. Things that can be easily checked and found to be a lie, okay? Some of this could be easily checked and wouldn't fly. The college stuff, the stuff with Publix and Kroger especially, especially, they definitely check. No, don't put reference on there, don't ever talk about a gap employment. And I said, Katie, if I hand that resume in, it's not going to get me a job, but I do agree about any gaps in employment. And here's where we get to the fun stuff. I think this continues on the next, so I'll kick it over there. I've worked all over the country and they never check if you do a good interview or worst case scenario, they don't hire you. I've hired people, I've been on the other end, I know a lot of this works, you don't have to use it, it's up to you. But the one you had before most certainly won't get you hired, you need to impress them. It's up to you, man. To get the jobs, you have to learn how to bullshit unapologetically. Again, this is the real Katie here. Unapologetically bullshitting. She demonstrated this back as far as 20, you know, even in, you know, 2012, okay? This really made people critical of Joy and would be a point often referenced when Joy really began to show her ass during the Daddy of Five drama. But Joy ignored this at first, spamming out nine more Daddy of Five videos the next day between her two channels. Someone pointed out that Joy was profiting off of the pain of these children by spamming out these videos, to which Joy responded, LOL, that's a really cute judgment. I barely make anything from YouTube, period. And after the changes, almost nothing. She was somehow also spamming out videos on other topics at this time as well, making a video claiming Onision was trying to sue her. That is, 10 plus videos posted between her two channels in a 24-hour 
hour span. And she wasn't done on social media either, tweeting out on that day that she would be posting a series of Daddy of Five videos tomorrow. One person responded to this announcement, Have to ask, why is it necessary to keep going over and over those poor kids suffering? Everyone already knows the situation. To which Joy responded, Because I'm a passionate advocate against it. I grew up in environments like this, and I want to point out what I see and why it's wrong. Her claim that her videos were not monetized seemed to be lies as well, as someone the next day posted screenshot evidence of ads running on her videos. I'm going to go over a timeline very basically for the rest of this month of what I could find. It was extremely overwhelming. She was posting 20 plus tweets a day and posting between 3 to 10 videos a day, as well as occasionally live streaming. On the 22nd, she made a Daddy of Five video, claiming she had a panic attack while filming, but she was hiding the panic attack on camera. The next day, she responded to criticism about her monetization, which remember, she claimed that she was barely making any money earlier. She tweeted, Because people can't wait to show I'm an asshole. Yes, I am donating all money made off the Daddy of Five videos. That's the only reason I monetize them, because I often say I will donate to charity slash have a moral standard and never release info, receipts on it, because I took this week to. On the 23rd, a law cow farmer noted at this point she had made over 23 videos on Daddy of Five in less than a month, and they wrote, She makes videos in a series from only tiny updates in the story that she reacts to in real time as they occur, but never really says anything new. She's basically repeating the same points at every video. Poor Cody slash poor me. That's right, that kid's not punished. He's told just to go while we all just f with Cody because we can. Child abuse is bad. Evil stepmom and spineless dad are dumb white trash. Um, Jake is the one that we can definitely see in videos being picking on the younger kids, being violent to them, and being favored as a result of doing that because white trash loves more white trash. The more evil it is, the more they respect it. That's how it works. These videos all added up to over five hours of Joy rambling and repeating herself. One of the videos I found was posted at 10 a.m. on the 23rd, titled Daddy 05 colon Mommy 05 court document second degree assault. And at this time, she now had 27 videos on the Daddy 05 case, or about that number. A day after this, she went on a You Now stream where, according to Lockow, she listed her medications. According to Lockow farmers, these meds were easy to find from basic Google searches and she also described how she got diagnosed with fibromyalgia very strangely. She said the doctor gave her a test for it, which according to the posters, there is no single test for fibro. This could have been just misspeaking on Joy's part, but now she also said that she had irritable bowel syndrome. So she has fibromyalgia, copper toxicity, Raynaud's disease, and IBS. And she was taking Lyrica, muscle relaxers, and Bentol. I'm sorry if I mispronounced any of this. She said that the doctor she went to also said she might have something called Wilson's disease. And she also made the claim that she only made $100 from her 27 Daddy of Five videos. After this stream, she made an announcement to Twitter that more Onision and Daddy of Five content was on the way. The next day, according to a post on Lolcow, she made a video on Spurpinklebow about Daddy of Five hiring a PR firm to help them during this controversy. Here, Joy claimed to be a PR pro herself. Months, motherfucker, months. They've been doing it for a long time. And it's finally just coming out to bite them in the ass. The people have been reporting on this. I didn't know about this until recently. So don't give me that minute. I understand this website was not created for them, but I'm tailoring everything you're saying to this specific account that you would take on this account and you would treat it with such a disrespect and fake rage you have. I'm pissed. I'm pissed on behalf of being a marketing, advertising, sales, and PR person. I'm pissed at what you're doing. Following all of this, her subs were going up. And Joy started an online flinging fight with the PR group helping Daddy05 on Twitter. Also on this day, Joy started up her Patreon. The intro to this Patreon read, Hi loves! Welcome to my Patreon! As many of you know, I have really fought hard in myself to not set one of these up. However, things have changed so that in order for me to continue making content, I will need some help. YouTube has slashed ad dollars so much that it is barely giving me enough money to survive. Now I have the added blessing of some expensive medication I have to take in order to continue to be healthy. I also do not monetize slash profit off of several of my videos that contain abuse of people or children, which is a big moral standpoint for myself. Any videos of that nature proceeds are donated accordingly. It is extremely hard for me to ask for any help. And if it is not something you can do, it's totally okay. You are still welcome to come hang out anytime. 
But for those of you that enjoy my content and want to continue to see it grow, I humbly ask for any help you would be willing to offer. Thanks so much to every single one of you. It's because of all of you I can continue doing what I love. And if I can give back to you in any way, or if you would like to make any additional deal outside of Patreon, please feel free to email me at joysparklebs at gmail.com. Love you guys. Thank you for being a blessing in my life. Her Patreon tiers were something of magic as well. For $69 a month, you can get a professional headshot of Joy holding a dildo. Signed, of course. For $420 a month, you can smoke weed with Joy on Skype. Joy announced another set of videos she was putting out on Twitter around this time, stating that she had made three new rant videos on the PR company, the Falston Group, that was working with the Daddy of Five family. Onision fans also began to criticize Joy on Twitter, saying that Joy just wanted attention. Of course, Joy had to respond to any criticism she got from the smallest source because she absolutely lived nonstop on social media. The next day, April 26, Joy decided to start her own GoFundMe to send Onision a fax machine. I'm not joking. It was titled, Help Onion Get the Facts He Needs. Cause Onision liked to screech about knowing facts. Facts! Give me facts. And Joy decided in her boomer Midwestern brain, this was an oh so f***ing hilarious pun. Joy's antics finally got her a Kiwi Farms thread. On April 27th, the opening post on her thread read, Joy Sparkle, aka Katie Marie Smith, is a YouTube personality who randomly appeared to insert herself into Onision drama and got 21,000 subs in three months after being noticed by larger YouTubers who also hate him. She makes lengthy one-take ranty videos about various drama on the internet, but mostly centers around Onision. She has made 50 plus videos about him in less than three months. He has called her a stalker, sent her a fake cease and desist letter, and blocked her on all social media. Her life also seems to revolve around around her getting attention from her fake fatal health issues, which have been diagnosed by medical professionals as an anxiety disorder. But that's not a special enough diagnosis for her, so she adamantly denies that's the cause. Recently uncovered information reveals she thinks angelic guides and the archangel Michael talked to her from the age of 12 on, and the thread linked the various old blogs and writings of her past in New Age spirituality. The same day as this thread, or sometime around this, Joy went on stream to show off her meds again. We know of this thanks to screen caps posted of this around this time. And I've described this event to several people because of how absurd it is, and every person responded with shock to what I described. Joy claimed to be on a medication called Lyrica, and instead of having the pills in a medication bottle, she showed it on camera inside a bottle that looked like a bottle used for Nature's Bounty or some other CVS over-the-counter vitamins with the word Lyrica written on a piece of paper and messily taped over the original label. She claimed that she put her pills in this bottle to help her know when to take them. She posted more videos the next day and people noted how energetic she was in them for someone who had fibromyalgia and was taking a drug like Lyrica, which has side effects such as dizziness. She also got cruder in the videos and according to one poster, she made the claim that Mike Martin was mad to footage of him abusing his own kids. The 28th of April comes with news that Joy had almost raised enough money to get Onisi on his fax machine on her GoFundMe. The GoFundMe was of course fake, a joke on Joy's part, but people were donating their real money to it. She allegedly also posted three more Daddy of Five videos on the 28th. Here is what one Anon wrote about one of the videos. They write, in the new Daddy of Five video, she claims a video game seen on one of the kids' computers is a screensaver. She's adding absolutely nothing to the conversation. She's just repeating that's being said in the video and mocking it and adding in these ridiculous insights that are baseless. She claims the kids had to learn on their own how to communicate. She does not know this family, yet she continues to educate everyone on how they really are. I, along with everyone else I'm sure, am sickened over the whole daddy of five situation. But come on, there's enough sh there to be sickened over without having to create new material. Joy was pretty manic on the 28th, tweeting nonstop about daddy of five, making claims about donating to charity, fighting with people on Twitter, fighting about her joke GoFundMe. Her GoFundMe was then taken down. She was also posting videos and live streaming. It was a lot. 
that. One of her videos also got taken down from YouTube for breaking TOS, for having harmful content. Because while wanting to raise awareness about the Daddy of Five abuse situation, she kept putting footage of the two children being abused in her videos. Yes, the footage does work to shock people into causing them to want to act. Choi was not just posting footage once in a while, she was posting constant videos and content about this abuse, to the point where many people began to raise their eyebrows in shock. She would post two more videos the next day, on the 29th. And by the 30th of April, in less than one month since the news broke, Joy had posted a total of 52 videos about the Daddy of Five case. And on this day, she posted another seven videos. One of the videos was called, Daddy of Five, Homophobic Towards Kids, Calls Them Gay and Effeminate. No, it's broken! Well, you could sit there and cry. Now you can sit there and cry. Now it's time for me to taunt you to make your emotions even worse and get a bigger reaction so I can sell it on YouTube even though I don't know how to put together a sentence well, broke. Every little detail or aspect Joy could take from these videos would be used to upload a new video with very little new information. Even if her videos weren't monetized like she claimed, she was benefiting from the abuse of the children with attention, subscribers, and views. Yes, it is great to bring awareness to a situation. I can't emphasize that enough. But she legitimately made a video talking about the screensaver on the computer in one of the abuse videos. For some reason. And the month of May comes and Joy does a live stream early on in the day where she talks about being sick and then the next day did another stream. And then on the second, Joy mirrored one of Chambers of the Heart's Daddy of Five videos to bring more awareness. Also on this day, she uploaded a video titled Where is Daddy of Five and Mommy of Five? Still on the run, allegedly. Daddy of Five had been silent for a short period of time considering the amount of shit he was in. But with how much Joy posts and how often, even a few days seemed like a massive absence in comparison. Then Joy started tweeting bragging about how many views she was getting on her Daddy of Five videos. She was obsessed and kept tweeting about the situation. There was an actual update to this case on this day though, via Nick Monroe, an online sort of journalist. And it seemed Mike Martin of Daddy of Five was being charged with domestic violence charges. The next day, Joy released another seven Daddy of Five videos, but also claimed that she felt too sick to do research of the videos herself. Someone new comes into the fray, a YouTuber I've talked about quite often on this channel, Mundane Matt. AKA Matt Jarbo. <laughs> Mundane Matt is a fat, soy soaked, penisless abomination who cries <laughs> over YouTube form letters. But in this situation, he actually came out on top. And I actually agreed with him a lot here. And he commented on one of Joy's videos, telling her she should wait for confirmation on information before making videos. Her fans did not receive this very good criticism well. Like, I made fun of Matt a lot on my channel, but he's right here. But even if Matt wasn't right, Joy can just, you know, ignore him. Later on, on the third, it looked like Joy had received a strike, as Joy's YouTube friend, Suit Yourself, tweeted out, hashtag free joy. YouTube now has a policy about targeted harassment and spamming videos on one subject. They didn't have this at that time, but Joy definitely is a great argument to have that rule. But it seemed like her video was taken down for a privacy complaint, and Joy took to Twitter to complain nonstop. Meanwhile, Nick Monroe tried to talk Joy down from flipping out on Daddy of Five's PR agency, Falston Group. And same day, May 3rd, Monday Matt came in once more to criticize Joy on Twitter, writing, I'm not against her covering it. She puts out nearly 20 in a day on the subject. Clickbait headlines and thumbnails too. To which Joy responded, I will not be consistently making this many videos, but I'm passionate about the subject because I don't want to see anyone else hurt. Matt responds, I get that, but you may want to rein it in a bit. Just some friendly advice. Matt continued, You don't need 11 videos in 24 or so hours not that much unfolded. To which Joy responded, You accuse my videos of being clickbaity. Have you watched any of them? Where was the clickbaitness? I respect you a lot, Matt. I really do. To which Matt says, I did watch your videos, and given the rate of which you were putting them out, there and the titles, it screams clickbait. I'm not attacking you for doing it. I've been there myself, years ago with Kony 2012 but you run the risk of running people off from it. Matt's criticism wasn't bad, but Joy didn't take it to heart and continued to spam out videos. Joy, in her responses, revealed to everyone where her info came from, writing, The info I get is firsthand from those that were slash are there. I say allegedly because of their PR firm and its shadiness. But thanks for the tip. 
Matt warned her about possibly legal issues with defamation. Though, to be fair, I doubt anyone would sue some crazy wackadoo from Kansas City. But Matt still wasn't wrong. Joy soon announced that she was in contact with another ex-wife of Daddy O Fives, one who wasn't Rose. And remember, we are still on the same day as everything else that just unfolded, the third, and announced there would be a video soon. She also tweeted out that she was on the phone with the lawyer of Rose, Tim Conlin, a man who was working with Rose pro bono to help her get custody of her kids. Joy then uploaded a video, again, we're still in the third, about the strike that she got from talking about Daddy of Five, and a new player comes in, Mike and Actor. Mike and Actor is an anti-O YouTuber who soon became a friend of Joy and tweeted out in support of Joy. Later that day, Chambers confirmed that she got Joy in contact with a lawyer, Tim Conlin. It is a mess. The day passes and the 4th of May is also a mess. Joy goes live to talk about all the drama, then uploads three new Daddy of Five videos. Then this is where things get really sketchy on Joy's part. Joy started to divulge very, very private information about the case, claiming that she had an insider giving her info. She started to detail the medication of the children and other personal things, like what was found with the CPS investigation. It was like TMZ coverage for a child abuse event. It was weird. People began to also worry about Rose's lawyer because it was assumed that Joy was getting this very private information about the case from him. Soon, Repsion joined in in criticizing Joy. He responded to a criticism of Monday Matt's on the 4th, writing, Videos do not need to be split into two separate videos. I agree it is done with the intention of more ad rev. Soon the fans of Joy started to try to respond to Matt's criticism, claiming he was jealous of Joy and suit yourself tried to get into a private conversation with Matt, all to defend the queen. Joy responded to Repsion's criticism later that day, writing, Hi Rep! Actually, I am donating the majority of the money of those videos to the Fund for Rose. If you ever have a question, I'm happy to answer. To which Matt said he didn't believe her claims and said that she was clearly gaining the system. People were really starting to criticize Joy outside of Matt and Repsion. Who could blame them? The woman never really showed proof of her donations or her ad revenue. She was running ads when saying she was demonetized and she was posting an average of six videos a day, acting like she was reporting serious news when a lot of it was her just yelling and repeating the same talking points. While Joy was responding irrationally to everyone on Twitter, Rose finally responded to Joy's email from the previous month on the 4th. I mentioned this earlier, she tells Joy to call her. This would cause some more spiraling to happen. The next day, the 5th, Joy would post four more videos on Daddy of Five. The titles of these videos are Daddy of Five, Rose, Mother, Interview on Good Morning America, My BBC Interview, What Happened, Should Daddy of Five or Mommy of Five Go to Jail, Daddy of Five, Custody Battle Not Over, Why I Continue to Cover This. Oh, I forgot to mention this. Side note, BBC Behind the Scenes asked Joy for an interview about the Daddy of Five case, and she turned them towards Chambers of the Heart, who was more closely involved in the mother, Rose's, side. I just wanted to note that here. But anyways, all these videos were posted in four hours. And then she posted a fifth video on the day, claiming that the lawyer had showed her information the psychiatrist professional had told them about the family on the case. It was all getting rather scummy. Then, we are still on the fifth, Joy went on Worski Live to discuss the drama and there, she was also called out on the drama. The same day as this, still the fifth, Nick Monroe also called Joy out on Twitter, writing, I do not condone some of the behaviors of Joy Sparkle BS that have come to light. They asked for permission to talk about this. That's it. But people keep DMing me about it. We are not friends. Some things they say are inappropriate. Stop pulling me into that drama. Thanks. Joy ignored these criticisms for the most part and continued to make Daddy O5 content on this day. But in the background, Nick, Worski, Repsion, and Monday Matt were not the only people critical of her. According to Joy's Google Drive that she published the following year, Chambers of the Heart and Based Mama, another small YouTuber who talked about religion. Because my IQ is extremely high. <sighs> it is extremely frustrating to not only be an intellectual anomaly myself, I guess like, you know, 140 is above average or whatever. I'm pickle red began to talk about Joy's erratic behavior in DMs. Based Mama had had custody issues in the past due to the internet and was very worried about Joy's insanity and how it would affect Rose getting custody. She told Chambers, and I quote, she is actively trying to make a name for herself on the back of Rose and the kids. She's averaging a video every three hours. 
and then told Chambers to stay away from Joy. Chambers did not heed this warning, but she did say she told Rose to cut off contact with Joy. And in another conversation between Joy and Chambers, Joy began to tell Chambers she was making videos on inside information she was receiving on the case. Chambers then begged Joy to please not make videos on the subject matter. It seemed that it wasn't Tim Conlon feeding Joy information, but someone else. And it freaked out everyone who wanted to help the kids. Base Mama, we are still on the fifth, eventually made her own video calling Joy out and claiming that Joy was harming Rose's case. The video was eventually flagged down for harassment, though a copy of it remained in Joy's Google Drive of her evidence to prove that she was being harassed by concerned YouTubers. Base Mama became very critical of Joy's behavior over time, and Joy believed this criticism was a harassment campaign to ruin her life. But Joy didn't stop. She spammed another seven videos out between the fifth and the sixth, and then finally something shut her up. Later on the sixth, Joy tweeted that she was not going to post any more videos that day. Apparently, a gag order had been placed on the case for anyone involved in it. This didn't mean YouTubers couldn't report on it, but it did make talking about it kind of sketch on their part if they did. But then Joy put out a video saying she wasn't going to talk about the case anymore on the 6th, and another YouTuber came into the mix, Negs. Negs at first was on good terms with Joy, and he put out a video on this day to talk about the drama between Joy and Based Mama. And her... Um... Her volume of videos has come under scrutiny, has come under fire by uh, Base Mama in a two and a half minute um, rant, which, um, which, which happens on this platform. It happens a lot. People make videos to, um, to, to express their, their discontent about something, right? Around the same day, a new point of criticism was being noted on Joy. Joy's tagging on videos. She would tag any and everything, even if it wasn't in the video, which is blatantly against TOS. But anything for views, right? Based Mama and Chambers' conversation continued on this day as well, the 6th. The two were extremely stressed out about Joy's behavior. And then the next day, the 7th, Joy put out two more videos on Daddy of 5. Joy will say one thing and do another and think her words manifest a reality. Also on the 7th, Chambers decided to cut ties with Joy posting on Facebook. My separation from Joy Sparkle BS. It has come to my attention that people's worries and fears of the YouTuber Joy Sparkle BS are proving to be accurate. It is now, with new awareness and attention to the situation, that I confirm specific facts. One, her number was given to Tim for contact. Two, the media harassing Rose and Tim. Three, the moving man in front of Mike and Heather's house. Four, Rose had made contact with Joy. Five, from recorded video of Joy's, she encouraged no harassment. Six, her new streams cannot confirm or deny. I defended Joy to confirm specific facts. I defended Joy due to her being my friend. And now, for the sake of Rose, who I guard, I detach myself and have given no new info outside of what has already been made public. I am not a source of info for Joy. I know nothing outside of what is already made public. Joy does not represent my chambers or my work. Joy does not represent my relations and my conversations with Rose. This is my final statement. I do not condone any and all poor behavior that Joy may or may not have encouraged of her fans. Associate me no more with her channel or her work. Thank you. Behind the scenes, Chambers had told Joy she needed to do this, to which Joy agreed to Chambers doing what she needed to do. But Joy's approval quickly turned to Joy flipping out on Chambers moments later and calling her snake. And then another side of things, Joy's fans began making fake exposed videos. Joy takes the term poisoning the well to a whole new level. On the 7th, Nick Monroe tweeted out that he saw Joy fighting with a fake false group account on Twitter. But not only that, he wrote that ever since he mentioned her earlier that day and her involvement, people had approached him privately to say that her followers scared them. Face Mama and Nick then began speculating on Twitter that Joy's involvement may get Joy in legal trouble. This did not turn out to be true. In the background on this day, on the 7th, we're still on the day, Face Mama and Chambers continued their conversation about Joy. It is revealed that Chambers had deleted her video crediting Joy. Joy would cite these private conversations later in the timeline as a conspiracy against her. But to be honest, it was mostly just Based and Chambers privately saying they didn't like her behavior. Based Mama spoke on video again around the 8th of May. In the now gone video, Base says that Joy's crazy is comparable to Mike Martin's crazy. She reiterated that Joy needs to stop making videos about Daddy of Five and also how damaging Joy's actions can be. She also says she will be contacting Frederick County Police about Joy having privileged information about the case. To be honest, Joy was allowed to speak. The gag order didn't affect her. What people should be worried about is who was leaking her information. After this drama, Joy didn't post a video for over 24 hours. And then some other news came out in the case on the 8th. Nick Monroe tweeted on this day, 
Update. The protection order against Mike Daddio 5 Martin has been extended to 2018. One full year. After all this fighting on Twitter, Joy tweeted out on the 8th that she was going to make a statement soon. And also she allegedly posted a video talking about the gag order at some point. Revsion finally made a definitive statement on Joy, tweeting out on the 8th. Since people have been hammering me, I did not support Joy Sparkle BS or her actions whatsoever. My red flag button has been activated. And then said that he thought Joy was breaching illegal boundaries. Not only did Revsion distance himself, the ex-wife, the one who wasn't Rose, that Joy was going to interview, decided to also distance herself from Joy. She tweeted, I supported her at first, even did an interview with her about my daddy of five experience. And after things happened, I told her to scrap it. I've now distanced myself. Joy then went live on You Now and started to, from what I can tell, have an absolute meltdown, calling everyone criticizing her, especially Chambers, snakes. Oh, and remember how I mentioned that Joy had supported Chambers originally in her wanting to separate from her publicly? She said this in private conversation. Well, after this, Joy also in private conversations began to grieve Chambers in anger. And this was all spurred because Chambers liked Based Mama's video. Very cool, I guess. They're adults. Chambers responded to Joy spazzing on her on her Twitter, writing, I liked Based Mama's vid. That's a problem? To which Joy responded, You want me to shut up? I did, so you guys need to shut the hell up as well. Stop lying about me. Stop supporting slander at me. Stop. Chambers then took to Twitter again to clarify the drama with Joy. She wrote, I didn't want to disconnect myself from Joy. I had to for Rose. To which Joy Sparkles responded in all caps, you told Monday Matt you only argued with him because you were defending me and it was wrong of you. You are manipulating. I have receipts. Joy soon went live around this time, early in the AM of the 9th of May, to screech more about Chambers' betrayal. Betrayal! What? Betrayal! Here's a summary from a LolCal user reporting about the live stream, live. Sage for same f Live stream recap. Lots of BS, lots of blame. Lots of complaining about Chambers, Base Mama, and Nick, who have been slandering her, and they better be prepared to defend the lies and apologize to her. They are jealous of her, and she helps some or all of them by giving shout outs. The gag does not apply to her, only to Rose and Tim. She is currently quiet because of what the others are saying, as it can damage the kids. None of them had the balls to say anything to her directly. Basically, nobody has the balls to say anything directly to her. This isn't the first time she has dealt with these kind of people. People. They keep saying she's profiting, but where have they donated? She's going to post the profit from the stream to Twitter and donate it. Asked about Indigo Children, claims she saw through the BS and moved on. All she basically meant was she, just like everyone else, had psychic abilities. Asked directly about talking to angels, basically responds with not answering. Instead, talks about it being the same as Chambers being a Christian, and she doesn't deserve to be attacked for her beliefs. She then mentions people digging up her past and says for people to go dig on Chambers. Base Mama and Nick, to which she was immediately called out on and said she never said that. What she said was to go dig through Twitter comments to see what people are saying about her, Joy. Next, she promptly mentions having to do another disclaimer, to not dig on the others that have turned on her. Kikthulu chats in. She says his video info was almost completely untrue, as she mentions it to roommate and tells him to go bone his fiance, then points out his facepalm that was just heard. So that's what I got before I couldn't take any more of her I had to type like a mofo, so pardon my spelling or punctuation errors. I just wanted to relay what she was blabbing about in case any info was missed because b is hard to follow. She continued to call Chambers a snake on the stream. Eventually, another YouTuber named Liz Reptile came on stream and apparently owned Joy. I asked Liz Reptile a little about the stream and Liz said that she was telling Joy she was f***ing everything up and she was relating this to the fact that Liz was a mother herself. Lolcat was posting about how badly Joy was being owned. After the stream, Joy went to Twitter again to say she was ready to get an attorney to talk about the situation about her being slandered. Then Joy on this day uploaded a video trying to write off her involvement in the indigo movement and blaming everyone for not liking her. And then, sometime on this day, a new player in the game came into the mix. Some guy named Aussie Guy Shane. Shane was a very small YouTuber and he posted a video on the 9th called Joy Sparkle BS Needs to Stop and criticized Joy's spamming of videos. Apparently Joy went on 
live stream again, and according to LolCow, this is her craziest you now as of yet. Here are the readings of some of the responses to the live stream. Summary so far. I know you are, but what am I? 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 And they continue on for like a lot more. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna read all of those. She's tripping over her words because she's so f***ing angry. LOL. She said heckling Kens about four times instead of cackling hens. Calling based mama Chambers and Nick Monroe that. Whatever it means, crazy chick. She just mentioned Lolcow, LOL. I've seen her go bat before, but this is incredible. It's projection theater. Heaping helping the paranoia going on. And then she brought on someone pretending to be at the admin of Lolcow, which it obviously was just a weirdo in a mask trolling Joy. It was a mess. I really wish I could find a copy of it. Meanwhile, on Twitter, Joy was retweeting every and anyone defending her. Also meanwhile, Fildo the Wizard started answering questions directly on the Lolcow forum. Back to Twitter. We are still on the 9th of May. Nick Monroe made a series of tweets on this day, calling out Joy some more. He wrote, There is a clear indication from the judge that they do not want information about the case made public. That should be respected. Katie Joy Sparkle B.S. Smith has decided to take that aspect of Rose's court case and blow it out of proportion as much as possible. A gag order is a gag order. <laughs> By having confidential information about the court proceeding from May 5th, it was violated. This is proven by Skype logs I obtained from at Chambers of Heart. This conversation happened on Friday, May 5th. And then proceeded to drop Joy's DMs on Skype with Chambers. In the conversations, Joy is hinting that she was receiving information from people in the courtroom on the case. People then began to dig into Joy's donation claims and found only evidence of her donating $100 a long while back from a Takedown Man video. The day finally passes, and it's May 10th. Joy uploads another strange video around this time, claiming she never leaves the house. Another small YouTuber came in to criticize Joy, called Michael Mikey, who made a video on this day titled, A Rant on Joy Sparkle BS and Her Weird Daddy-05 Obsession, where they also criticized Joy for the amount of videos she put out on the situation. Uh, 68 Daddy05 videos released in the span of only two weeks. And I think part of the reason why she's making so many videos is because, well, it, it'll bring in those views. Yeah, because that's what YouTube is all about. Getting thousands upon thousands of views uh, and thousands upon thousands of subscribers. She's skyrocketed in popularity since this whole drama unfolded. Then another popular anti-Onision YouTuber came in to criticize Joy. Some guy, also known as Stevie Wolf. His video is now gone, but it was apparently a 38-minute video on how he never trusted Joy. And finally, there was evidence of Joy donating her money on this day. It showed on the GoFundMe that Joy Sparkle had donated $600, though considering she had made 90 videos on Daddy of Five that were running ads if screenshots were to be trusted, and some of them reached hundreds of thousands of views, this $600 was nothing. Up and coming YouTuber, Martin Lewis, made a video on Joy on this day called Joy Sparkle Exposed. The video brought up that Joy had made 70 videos on Daddy05 in two weeks. And you're f***ing with children. Now I wanna back up to the younger- So obviously from that, I do feel that she's someone who's really passionate and who, from what it looks like, wants to help children. She's also one of the other YouTubers who really threw the story out there about um, Daddy05. Allegedly, she has made 70 videos about Daddy05 within two weeks. That is a lot. And that Joy might be doing more harm than good. Maybe I can try to get better and it could help other people, not because I'm some amazing guru, but let's try to find some good in suffering, right? I do feel that she is someone that really wants to help people and I could be wrong and I'm willing to be corrected, but is her helping people doing more harm than good? It also had clips of Joy saying she had diarrhea and brain fog. Anyone who's chronically ill understands that depression comes with it. I call it temporary depression. Slowly get better because I have, it's getting better, but then when I have a swing like this, when I swing into fever for a week and just diarrhea and and chills and horrible stunt when I swing into that and the brain fog. 
an illness that stops her from going outside, that zaps her energy, gives her brain fog, diarrhea. So she has mentioned this in a lot of her videos. Allegedly in her videos, she has claimed that she has copper toxicity from an IUD and that's why she's chronically ill. Martin mostly made this video to point out Joy's sketchy history with new age beliefs as well as her claims of illnesses. Some people have even asked her, well, how can you make videos if you're chronically ill? Hey, well, how can you make videos but you can't do it? Because for me, my strong point is just standing up and talking. Standing up and talking in front of the camera, and this video takes almost no editing. It's like plop it in, upload. That's, what do you guys think? Do you think she's able to do all that work, make all those videos, plus you now? and stand doing those videos? Let me know your answer in the poll. Yep, she's crazy. Um, she believes that she talks to angels and that she's psychic and that she's an indigo child. Indigo child claims. As you guys know, Base Mama mentioned that in her video, but she didn't really go into full detail about it. There's a website out there called Ashtar Command and there's a post called Don't Feel Guilty, posted by Sandra, and she was actually posting, uh, posting Katie Smith's si uh, story of ascension through an indigo's eyes. A major point he had was that she had claimed to have a tumor on her neck, but at other points, she claimed it was something else. And this is an alleged message that she sent to her old friend called Angel. I had severe asthma and allergies when I was little, was in the ER three to four times a year on steroids. My 70 year old doc said I was the worst case he had ever had seen. I was able to fix it with changing my diet and exercise and meditation. As nuts as it sounds because I was told there was no cure at all and I didn't just grow out of it like they told me might happen. She continued to say, then around 25, I got a tumor on my neck that was imperable. Again, had to change diet and learn about herbal remedies and it went away. Asthma lasted for from the ages of 8 to 17, around 15, I got a better hold of it. But still a common cold was an ER trip and steroids for me. And tumor candida was a year long. Process at 25 and then nothing until four years ago. The second thing I wanted to make sure and say to everybody is no matter what you're going through with your body. And believe me, like I had a tumor one time that I, that I had for a year on my neck that was killing me. But I was told it could not be operated on, I would die. Now here you have it in this radio broadcast or podcast, she says she has a tumor and if it was operated on, she could die. Now this was posted in 2014, the 6th of March. Saying that, in a video she has claimed as well, which kind of proves that maybe she has gone through this, you know, she's been sick, she's been better, she's been sick, she's been better. She had claimed in one of her broad, uh, in her videos. Um, I've even, I, be I believe I've healed some illnesses with herbs and food and stuff that I've already had. But that's not the case here. You can't just get rid of heavy metal. That would be some miraculous Jesus by all means I am not anything of that nature or healer as I said before I'm not one of those people now she said she had a tumor but on a tumblr post that she had she said it was something else. The bottom paragraph it says the only way to do that is to breathe through this immense fear that has started to slowly kill me. This fear manifested in the form of neck abscess and a fungal infection which almost killed me. She says she had an abscess and a fungal infection but before she said she had a tumor. Meanwhile, a group chat amongst Joy's inner circle called Joy Fam Squad leaked onto the Lolcow Farms, where everyone was kind of freaking out about Fildo. Also, in the background, still in the tent, Based Mama and Chambers continued their conversation about Joy. In this conversation, Based said, There's a good 40 people gathering to take her down. They were kind enough to wait till she admitted that Tim and Rose weren't her source because she was being damn sketchy about making Tim look like a bad lawyer and Rose look petty. In the conversation, 
Johnson. Chambers asked if this attempt to take down Joy was wrong, and Bast responded that she would have left Joy alone if Joy had stopped spamming so much information from an outside source about the case. The day passes, May 11th, and Joy seems to be frantic about everyone closing in. Instead of stepping back and regaining composure, she allegedly started to non-stop email Nick Monroe. And along with that, Monday Matt started to push more at Joy about her behavior. He criticized her for claiming that Mike Martin was turned on by the abuse of his kids. And this is when Joy started up a strange excuse for when she misspoke and did something inappropriate. She claimed here that this joke about Mike Martin jerking off to his kid's abuse, she said it was a sarcastic joke? That's not what sarcasm means. Meanwhile, Joy was fighting with people. She was trying to make everyone accept that she had an inoperable tumor on her neck that she healed with garlic. I want to note that later on in the timeline, her family, or people claiming to be her family, came forward to say the stuff about her neck was all bull that it was more likely a swollen gland or something, and told the story of how she fled the doctor when they were going to do something to fix the gland issue. Joy finally responded to fill those chat leaks on the 11th, and responded specifically to her telling him to lie about his resume. She wrote, If this really happened, then I said to sell yourself. I have hired people because I did a lot of management. What is wrong with this? Ignoring the fact that she made up jobs that Phil though never did to put on his resume. It wasn't selling yourself. It was straight up lying. Also on this day, Worski went live about Joy again. Worski's channel got wiped from YouTube, so archives of the videos are hard to come by. And I couldn't get this live stream. Though I want to thank the YouTuber, Say No to Gino, for helping me find other archives. Give him a sub. In the stream, Andy briefly touched on the Joy vs. Based Mama drama, but judging from reports from Lolcow, there wasn't a lot on the subject. And then some crazy drama explodes behind the scenes in Joy's inner circle. Some guy named Tim's Wise Words decided to talk to Fildo the Wizard about Joy, and this was obviously evil. He went to the Joy group chat to apologize. Joy's friend Angel then came in to berate Tim and call him an forever going against the Church of Joy, and say that Tim didn't actually have PTSD because she knew four people with PTSD, and he wasn't one of them. Joy eventually joined the conversation to re at Tim, and talk about how he had now damaged her life by talking to Phil though. And then, Joy just started typing in all caps, trying to make Tim feel like for talking Joy in a private message. This is such high school stuff, but it really demonstrates how Joy deals with anyone who isn't completely on her side. She even went so far as to say that Tim was compromising her safety by saying he didn't like her to her ex-friend. By the end of the conversation, she blocked Tim for daring to question her narrative. I found the DM conversation between Tim and Phil though, and in the conversation, Tim just said the story wasn't adding up and that he thought she was an attention whore. It wasn't a nice thing to say, but he didn't make her unsafe by questioning her. The day after this, the 12th of May, chat logs were leaked showing that Joy's fans were doing something to troll Nick Monroe for speaking out against Joy. The fans were pretending to hate Joy to troll him, for some reason. I don't know. Then Joy posted a video on this day on Daddy of 5 but says in the video she won't talk about Daddy of 5 and will talk about it later. Riveting. And then posted a video to her second channel called Responding to Criticism, Who's Right? The video got ratioed. In the video, Joy blames other people for not liking her 10 video day thing. She said it was in the past that she spammed videos, even though she was still currently doing it. In Joy's head, the only reason people criticized her was because they weren't listening to her and were making up their own narratives. Here's what I want you guys to understand. Like, okay, one criticism I got, and I'm not going to go too into it, and in fact, I've addressed this before, was on Joy Sparkle BS, um, there was a short time for a specific reason that I did, like, you know, several short videos a day. I'm talking one day I did 10 videos a day. I will open, I will raise my hand, and people were really upset. You shouldn't do it this way. And people went nuts at me about it, even though I explained what I'm doing and why. People didn't listen. They come up with their own narrative. Or maybe they do listen and they just don't want to believe it. And they, again, they come up with their own narrative, their own story, their own conspiracy on what they think I'm doing and why. But in all honesty, people just had two eyes and their own brain. She also complained that people criticized her looks. People love my hair, but my hair is Amish looking. It's gross. Cut it. You have split ends. It's frizzy. It's too curly. Why do you try to straighten it? You're f***ing vain. My clothes, obviously, don't ever fit right. And it's funny because as I've explained before, that I've got, as I've gotten, as you know, guys, I've gotten ill over the last year, I gained a lot of weight, so yes, things don't fit. And I'm still holding out hope that I'll get better and I'll get whatever it is going on in check and I'll lose the weight again so this won't be an issue. Her main issue was that all the criticisms were different. There are so much constantly being thrown at me and it's all conflicting 
And to be honest, it just feels like Joy doesn't understand that all people have different opinions and she didn't need to respond to every criticism. But maybe, just maybe she could have listened to some, but she didn't. She just complained about the criticism. The next day, on the 13th, people began to dig into the charity Joy was donating to, Special Spaces. It turned out to be a real charity, but people began to start the rumor that Joy herself owned the charity to get money and fake being charitable. Then, later on in the day, Joy made a video on the feminist YouTuber Lacey Green. Joy really wanted in the skeptic YouTube sphere, and responding negatively to feminist videos was a huge trend during the time. And then she uploaded another video on Onision, now gone to time, like most of this stuff. And then, uploaded another video to her second channel, a part two to her Onision video titled, Onision Calls Jacqueline Glenn and Her Chest Ugly, Because Social Repose, Part Two, where she criticized Onision commenting on Jacqueline Glenn's breast implants. The part one was on her main channel, which it's really weird splitting up videos into parts on two channels, but whatever. It isn't necessarily a bad video, but it's just weird that one part was on one channel and the other part was on another channel, and now that that other channel is gone, we can only see the part two. In the background on this day, Chambers and Based Mama continued to talk about Joy. They were discussing what to do with Rose and the CPS situation. The day passes, and the 14th comes, and Joy gets a new obsession. On this day, she tweets out, asking for a scientist to help her, and tag the YouTuber Nerd City. Nerd City isn't a scientist, he just wears a lab coat. Anyways, continuing. She started getting into some drama with something called Purple Mattress, and the next day, she posts a video about Purple Mattress. Obviously, this would be one of the many obsessions for Joy. She was slowing down a bit, at least judging from posts discussing her activities. Joy goes on stream on the 16th and talks about the drama with Chambers and Phil. Here's an Anon's summary of the stream. Quick summary. Differences of opinion equals spreading lies about her and slander. More painting herself as the victim and claiming she's taking the high ground regarding ex-friends. She still loves and cares about them and wants to make peace, but it's just not possible, guys. She's just so heartbroken. More keeping secrets to protect people that want to hurt her. It's ridiculous! Doesn't want to talk about former friendships because she respects them. Phil's video is a three-hour narrative painting her as the scum of the earth. Bringing up every awful thing they can find. Says she didn't watch it, but was given bullet points, so she thinks her crimes are helping someone and little discrepancies. Claims logs were from 10 to 12 years ago. Says she tried to fix the relationship. She was rejected. Swears she does not pick sides or play games. Wishes for peace. Cody is apparently friends with her, and Phil is suggesting things to patch up the friendship. She claims she tried everything, but he's not really letting this go. She was a really good friend, not a perfect friend, but still really great. Irritated because no one ever sent her a private message, instead of just making it public on Twitter. Aren't her DMs closed? After streaming, she released another Purple Mattress video, where she called an employee. She went and streamed again the next day. Joy acted innocent and normal here, according to posts, in comparison to the previous weeks. Also on the 17th, she posted another Purple Mattress video. And then a feminist skeptic video. Martin Lewis comes back into the mix on the 18th of May with a video called, Is Joy Sparkle BS Scamming? people. In the video, he questions Joy and her angel talking beliefs again. Um, and here it says at her website where she gives online counseling and channeling. So if someone can't speak to angels, making the claim that they're speaking to angels and they're selling those services to you, what do you call that if it's not real? Do you call it a scam? Do you call it a mistake? Can she talk to angels? But has she scammed anyone? We don't know. So, there's no evidence of her actually scamming someone, but I guess there's evidence of her saying she talks to angels, she knows how to do this channeling. Do I think she's scamming people now? Not that I've seen. I haven't seen any proof. I do think some people are just talking crap. And I think some people have some valid points. Do not know if Joy scammed anyone, but her behavior really caused a lot of questions. And the fact that direct answers were impossible to attain says something. After this, Joy went on stream and reported that she had a new diagnosis. Add PTSD to the mix. Also on the 18th, Joy contacted Rose via email, as seen in Joy's Google Drive. In the email, Joy hopes for the best and says she supports them and will remain silent. Rose responds and says Joy didn't do anything wrong and thanks Joy for her help. 
All right, break time. Here's a list of Joy's ailments that she has listed thus far. Childhood asthma, PTSD, an eating disorder, fibromyalgia, copper toxicity, miscarriages, irritable bowel syndrome, near seizures, near heart attacks, almost collapses, unexplained chronic fevers, suicide instincts during PMS. Things are slowing down at this time. On the 20th, she posted a video on Glenn Beck or something, and it wasn't so nuts. Wait, no wait, no wait, something crazy happens on this day. The best absolute thing happens on the 20th. After a few days of being a little more calm than usual, Joy decided that the best thing to do for her reputation was to live stream herself having a meltdown at a Ford dealership. Because that's been an issue as well. I'm not upset with you. I am not. I'm upset with your GM who apparently can't speak politely to me now, doesn't know where my keys are, as well as can't make a phone call. Yeah, I see you looking at me. Your job is to deal with people that are upset. That's what you are paid for, and that's what you scam people for. Nobody else will even look at me. The GM has been exceptional. You are paid to deal with this. How much has he paid? I know a GM salary, the dealership. What, 80, 90, 100,000? You are paid to fix problems. You are paid to make sure your staff does what they're supposed to do. If I have been talking to and have a, and literally within the first few months, all of these issues, and they knew it. <laughs> I'm so mad. And now apparently the work hasn't really been done. When, when excelling the vehicle shakes and will not go faster than it says no work done. Joy had an issue with her Ford Fiesta and decided to go to the dealership, scream at everyone, and live stream it to her audience, all while bragging that she was super online famous and she was going to expose the dealership. But strangely enough, Joy's fan base was supporting her, and they were saying that the car dealership was in the wrong here. Later on in the day, after raging at the car dealership, Joy then blocked Chambers. Joy responded to Chambers, tweeting about the block, writing, You don't want to burn anyone else? Well, burning me again after admitting I did nothing wrong? Keep talking trash, though. Fake apologies. After this, Joy went live again. There, she tried to explain her car dealership meltdown from earlier in the day, and said she told the dealership she needed a reliable car because she's sick. Also at some point on this day, the 20th, Joy talked with Rose Hall again via email. In this correspondence, she says she doesn't want to be involved in the daddy of five situation anymore. Things are calm for a day, but then Joy goes live again on the 22nd. The stream, like almost everything else, is no longer up. But in this stream, she talks more about the car dealership meltdown. She says everyone criticizing her is jealous and says that Chambers was really rude to her. The next day, Joy posted two new videos, though I don't know on what, and then went live again. The hustle is strong, no disrespect. There on the live stream, she ranted more about being sick and how lol cow is evil and sends her death threats. Joy continued to post videos on this day and posted three videos on a really serious event, a terrorist bombing at an Ariana Grande concert in Manchester. People were extremely displeased with Joy for exploiting the situation. And even worse, she seemed to be getting information wrong due to her rushing out these videos. Some more stuff gets posted and much like Joy's counterpart, Onision, it's constantly the same thing over and over with the same results ending up with everyone thinking that they're insane. I actually think right here is a good time for a break. I'm going to be cutting this part one into two parts. Initially part one was going to just cover all of 2017, but now because it's so long, I'm cutting it into two parts. I'm not sure if I adequately portrayed the reason I find Joy so interesting in these two hours that we've shared together. But if I didn't and you are still mildly interested, please come for the next part. It gets crazier. There's going to be a part after that as well. Like, I originally wanted to cover all of 2017 of the Joy lore into the first part, but as I was editing it, this coverage of 2017 became four hours long. And I decided, wow, Cecil, split this up into another part. And that's what I'm doing. The next part gets even crazier. Like, Joy is my favorite weirdo on the internet. I find her so fascinating because I used to genuinely like her, and she was able to fool me into what she said oh so well. That's a talent. Joy is certifiably insane in my opinion, but she is also incredibly charismatic, and that's amazing. Like a cult leader, like Onision, the person she criticized. In the next part, we will conclude the 2017 story arc of Joy, and then we will actually get to my favorite arc of the Joy Sparkle BS journey, the return of Joy. Oh, that's nuts. It's amazing. If I were to say I was a fan of any law cow, I would say I'm a fan of Joy. She's not a predator or someone who hurts animals or children, so I can watch her insanity without feeling outrage. She's just a loon, and I love her for that. I can't necessarily say she's a great person, but her actions on the internet 
don't physically disgust me. Joy currently is doing TikTok, which I will be talking about later in this series. And in her TikToks, she talks about talking to aliens. Holy sh! I don't even know if I should talk about this now. I won't, I won't. Just look forward to the next part. Anyways, Joy, can't wait. Now, some of you may be wondering why I'm talking about this story now, four years later. Well, one, I love telling internet stories after they've finished. And also, I do think Joy's behavior online can work as a set of warning signs when looking at e-celebs and how some of them will try to manipulate their audience. I want to elaborate on this lesson when we get to the conclusion of 2017. Where we are currently now, Joy is non-stop causing drama wherever she goes, and she has a loyal following. In the next part, we will see what happens when her throne is shattered beneath her, and see how she behaves when everything becomes transparent. So, in my outro, I want to thank my patrons, listed here. If you want to support my content, I charge no more than once a month, and I only charge when I make long-form videos. So consider becoming a patron! I especially want to thank my $20 and over patrons. $20 and over patrons get special art done by me. Heart you guys! And I also want to thank the voice actors for this part. Subscribe to them. They are I Write Alex, Justin Wang, and Toad McKinley. Subscribe! Anyways, the next part should come soon. I can not wait. I want to tell you more on this. You'll enjoy it, I promise. See you in the next part and suffer lightly.